Hello everyone, this is Jean and I'm back with the second video of the day, and for once the shirt actually is a bit symbolic. Uh, as requested, I will be uh, discussing my thoughts on uh, Juneteenth, right, June 19th, which is a uh, slavery-related, uh, now federal, uh, holiday, right, so black woman, black hair, black shirt, right, black on black on black. As the saying would go, I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm blackity black, and I'm black, y'all. But before I start, as requested, right, Evie said that she would love to hear my Juneteenth video because as a black woman, she finds it irritating. She finds the whole thing around Juneteenth, I'm assuming, irritating. And Taylor Wilson says, I want to see your video to discuss about Juneteenth and Biden and BLM and dumb pandering hypocrisy that bothered some mostly blacks. Can you mention me in your video on Juneteenth on my comment? I want called out true hypocrisy of black America and worried me and most Americans middle of politically incorrect era. <laughs> well, there you go, Taylor. There you go. I've mentioned you. I've read your comment. Now, let's get something straight about not just Juneteenth, but every uh, holiday that currently exists, whether it be cultural, whether it be secular, whether it be religious, from Christmas to Columbus Day to MLK Day to every observance that we have here in America, and of course across the world, but let's just focus on America. Hey, RJ. It's political. Let's first establish that every, every holiday especially the major ones where you get a day off work, is political in some fashion. They can say that it's in the name of a black leader or this event or that event or this religion or that religion or this culture or that culture, but in the end, it is all political. That is why these politicians always march in these uh, parades, if there is a parade, that's why they, you know, if it's a religious thing, like, say, Christmas, they go to church, like, the one time of the year they actually attend Mass, right, or whatnot, right? They will, you have to remember that politicians are like chameleons, right? Chameleons, you know, they are able to change color so they blend in. Uh, politicians are much the same. They will change affiliations, they will uh, do whatever they have to do to get in with the people so that you'll vote for them, right? So if they have to say that they care about this group or that group and want to pass a holiday to show that, that's what they'll do. And let's be honest, for most holidays in modern America, they are not observed for the reason why they are passed. Most people do not observe, for example, MLK Day to remember Martin Luther King or to, um, what's what I'm looking for, remember, you know, the hard path to equality in American history for African American people, right? Most people do not celebrate pride, which is what we're in right now, because they actually want to commemorate events like Stonewall or to celebrate the progress that the LGBT community has made both socially and legally in America. Most holidays are simply about having a day off and then using that day to either you know, go shopping, buy things, right? There's always huge sales on holidays, right? You think of Christmas, Thanksgiving, stuff like that, right? There's a huge sale, and most of the time people use these days uh, either to gather with family, especially in the summertime, you know, Memorial Day, a lot of people do cookouts. You have Fourth of July coming up. People are going to be doing cookouts and fireworks and, and all that stuff, right? But the majority of holidays are not celebrated for the reason why, right? Most people don't celebrate Christmas because they want to commemorate the birth of Jesus or engage in any sort of Christian religious practice. They want presents. <laughs> I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but that's the truth, generally speaking. Of course, you do have some people who really do celebrate one holiday or another for the intended purpose, right? There are some people, for example, who for Memorial Day will, you know, go to the grave site of soldiers or law enforcement who have died in the line of duty, or they'll do something called the MRF, which is this sort of exercise 
routine that was done by a, a uh, I think it was a soldier, but he had been in 9-11, right? He had passed away, and so people do that in his memory. So there are some who will commemorate it. But generally speaking, for most holidays, especially major federal holidays, which is, which is what Juneteenth now is, people don't use the day to remember the event. They use the day as a day off to do whatever. I spent today, I spent the morning of Juneteenth not remembering <coughs> slavery because I know I'm old, but I'm not, I wasn't around for slavery. I am not, I have never been enslaved unless holding a job counts <laughs> as slavery. Right? And no one in my immediate family or even back to my grandparents was ever uh, enslaved. So it's possible that there are slaves back in my family line through the African American part, or perhaps even the Native American part, I don't know. But again, no one in my immediate line, at least to my knowledge, uh, was ever enslaved, right? I'm not that old. I know I look it, but I am not that old. I, I spent the majority of, of, of Juneteenth either cleaning up, you know, ironing clothes, cleaning my, my room, or napping with my cat, <laughs> right? So I am no different in these things. I don't celebrate the holiday. That's probably the one big difference. I don't. I gave up celebrating holidays. I just ended up finding it pointless over the years, so I just stopped. I just acknowledged what it is day for me to do stuff. Most holidays do not have any personal significance to me. Now, if holidays, be they religious or cultural or whatnot, have a significance to you, I respect that. I'm certainly not trying to, to dampen anyone's day. But for me, they're just days off and I treat them as such. They no longer hold any sort of personal uh, meaning or attachment for me personally, right? So. There's my general spiel about um, holidays in general, right? Now, if we're talking about Juneteenth in particular, which just, uh, what was it, uh, Thursday? Because it was technically the 19th, which is today, right? But well, for me, we got Friday off, just as we did last year at my job for Juneteenth, right? So let's address uh, Trevor Noah's uh, tweet here saying, Happy Juneteenth, the first U.S. holiday that's illegal to teach about in 15 states. Which, of course, is not the truth. What's illegal, or what certain politicians are trying to make illegal in certain states, is uh, teaching critical race theory. Teaching critical race theory is not the same as teaching about slavery or Juneteenth, right? Slavery is a part of the basic education that you receive as an American uh, as regards American history. The Civil War has always touched upon, slavery in the U.S. has always touched upon, Jim Crow and whatnot. Again, depending on like which level you're talking about, right? Obviously, you're, you're not going to get into the nitty-gritty if you're trying to teach history to like 10-year-olds, right? But as you get older and you go through school and all that, uh, you do learn more about American history, and in part is that it's history as regards African Americans and slavery. And with people like Trevor Noah, believe me, we will never, ever forget it. We will never get past slavery with, um, with, uh, oh, I'll just be blunt, with shit stirrers like uh, Trevor Noah here, right? So yeah, Trevor is like I just said, stirring, he's stirring it, he's stirring it, he's stirring the shit. And he wants attention, so he's gotten it, as you've seen here. He's gotten attention, he's still getting quote tweeted and retweeted and everything else, right? But his statement is simply factually inaccurate. It is critical race theory that is being opposed in some states. Not the teaching of Juneteenth, not the teaching of slavery, not the teaching of American history. But sadly, slavery will always be a part of American history. You can't erase it. You can't get rid of it. Same way that the oppression of the Native Americans, right? Losing their land constantly because of, of the uh, uneven deals with the government and the army and everything. Uh, American history does not shy away from this. It's, <laughs> right, again, it may not do go into like a deep dive when you're going up through, through, through school, but it does not shy away from these things. I've heard about the Trail of Tears. I've read about the Trail of Tears. I've, I've heard plenty of things about 
of what the country did to the natives and, you know, guys like Andrew Jackson and all this other stuff. And I've heard what the natives did to, to the white man. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. Right? But anyway, uh, that general spiel over. Now, my feelings in particular about Juneteenth. For the most part, I am neutral. It's a federal holiday now. But as I just said, it's that it's just uh, purely political. What I find interesting about this is the fact that, first of all, from what I was reading, uh, while Biden may be the president who, who now made Juneteenth the federal holiday, which apparently was being celebrated or at least acknowledged in Texas, because let's see what Juneteenth actually is. Right, so the History Channel this growing full-line brand, and people are taking it everywhere, taking trailblazer outdoors, confidently taking on new places with Equinox, and taking on more with Silverado. Whatever you do, there's a perfect Chevy to take you anywhere. Find your perfect Chevy, current qualified... What's on here? Weird. Five lessees can get this 2021 Equinox for Rock. But anyway... <laughs> Let's start again. Juneteenth, right? Juneteenth, short for June 19th, marks the day when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas, in 1865 to take control of the state and ensure that all enslaved peoples be free. The troops' arrival came a full two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. So technically, slaves were free because the Emancipation Proclamation had already been signed back in like 1862 or 1863. <coughs> it's just that the slaves in Galveston, Texas weren't notified because their masters never told them, right? So it says here that uh, uh, it became a federal holiday on June 17th. It says here that Robert E. Lee had, had, had surrendered in Virginia, but slavery had remained unaffected in Texas until uh, General Gordon Granger stood on Texas soil and read General Orders Number 3, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the Executive of the United States, the President, right, President Lincoln, you know, President Abraham Lincoln, all slaves are free, right? So this is really a more Texan thing, right? Which is probably why it wasn't taught to me and others Right, when I was going up in school, because I've been in New York City all my life. Right, we never got one damn word, no mention about Juneteenth. Because why would we? This didn't happen in New York State. It didn't happen in New York City. Right? Former Dutch colony. This happened in Texas. So it makes sense to me that the Texans would know, but probably the U.S. at large wouldn't know. Well, so what I, what I also find interesting is that according to Wikipedia, it says here that uh, Juneteenth is a federal holiday uh, celebrated by uh, African Americans, right? It's like African American history, culture, and progress. Uh, my man, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Wikipedia, hi, I'm black, or at least half black, raised in the black community, raised by black family. Uh, Grown up in the black part of New York City and Queens all my life. Known plenty of black people in all different parts of the city, in all different age and range groups and social groups and economic groups and all that. No one ever said one damn thing about Juneteenth. I literally had never heard of this until last year, when for the first time in all the years I have been a part of the uh, higher education system that I work in, Right, and I've been either a student or an employee or sometimes both since I was 20. I'm 36 now, so I've been in, in the higher education system in New York for 16 years. No one ever gave us a day off for Juneteenth or any sort of African-American holiday in June up until last year. That's simply the, the objective facts. I am not opposing uh, a day off. I'm just saying, no one said a word, no one acknowledged it, no one mentioned it. I had no idea it existed, because literally no one ever told me. I've known black professors, I've taken college level history courses. No one mentioned it here in New York City, in any level of 
of, of our education system. And let's be honest, nobody ever would have if it hadn't been for the death of George Floyd and the, everything that kicked off. Because remember, this time last year, he'd only been dead a few weeks, right? And, and his death and, and the response to that, right, the BLM riots and everything, were still very raw and very fresh, and they were just getting started, right? New York City, in fact, uh, was either under or had been under curfew. I made videos about that last year, about the fear state, which we're still living in. It may not be official curfews anymore, but you can't go outside at night anymore because of the violence. And you certainly couldn't go outside back then because of the violence, hence why our elected oppressors of Cuomo and de Blasio passed a curfew for a week. The first night, it was from, uh, curfew ended at, at, at 11. Then the next day, it ended at 8 p.m. But you could still go protest in the name of BLM. But I couldn't go across the street to my deli and get a sandwich at past 8 for a whole week. Thanks, Cuomo and de Blasio. Jerks. <laughs> but anyway... Right, so it says here that it had popularity in the 70s with focus on African-American freedom and arts. Yeah, but again, like I said, it's not exactly something that was, at least in my experience, heavily uh, acknowledged, right, or celebrated. And I'm African-American. I've never known any African-American to celebrate this or to mention it. I'm not saying none do, but obviously there's not enough of us collectively that do to make this something that culturally we do in the community. Otherwise, I would have at least heard of it, right? But here's what's, here's what I find interesting. Apparently, the president who at least sort of floated the idea of Juneteenth and making it a federal holiday wasn't Biden. Biden may have been the one to actually pass it a few days ago, but it was Trump. It was Trump who was the one who was actually trying to get African-Americans on his side by passing this, or at least promising to pass it, right? So here we have this article from uh, uh, Rudders, Rudders, saying, this is from like September of last year, right? right? So this is before the election. So this was a campaign promise, right? Trump pledges to make Juneteenth federal holiday bid for black, in, in bid for black voters. President Donald Trump made a series of promises to a campaign event in Atlanta, which of course has a large uh, African-American population, right? On Friday in a bid to woo black voters, including establishing Juneteenth, which commemorates the end of U.S. slavery. No, it commemorates the end of it in Texas. Get it right. It was already ended in, in 1863 with the Emancipation Proclamation, right? It says here as a federal holiday. And then it says here that uh, Trump who announced the promises less than 40 days before the November presidential election. And of course, now we all know how that turned out. <coughs> also pledged to designate two groups as terrorist organizations, the Ku Klux Klan and Antifa, that, that according to this article, oppose fascism. Sure, they oppose fascism so much they actively practice it. But anyway, Trump had also promised to increase access to capital in black communities, create more jobs. <coughs> Excuse me. And support black owned businesses and expanding uh, opportunity zones. And it says here that Trump had said that he would always put Americans first and that included black Americans, right? And then uh, uh, it mentions here at the bottom, toward, toward the bottom here, that only Congress has the power to create a federal holiday, but Trump could help introduce a measure for lawmakers uh, to pass. Now, here's something that I contest a little bit from this article. It says here that calls to make Juneteenth, June 19th, a federal holiday grew louder this summer as, as BLM protests swept through the country and many organizations gave their workers a day off. Hmm. I experienced the day off part for the first time because no one gave a damn about this holiday prior to that. <laughs> but here's the thing. Now, I will admit, I was not on Twitter uh, until November 2020. But 
I'm always online, and as you know, I make videos, and I've often included tweets, and when you make articles or write articles, because there are oftentimes links to, to tweets. So while I wasn't on Twitter at the time, I certainly, you know, had access to social media and to tweets. And we all saw, you know, how every corporation out there rushed to say that uh, they supported BLM and Black Lives Matter, and they put out all these, you know, corporately approved we care. We care a lot. Please keep supporting us. We will support whatever is socially acceptable to support. <laughs> type uh, uh, statements out there, right? Yet, I don't recall any of them. I'm not going to say that there, that there were none. But I did not, but I don't recall any of them actually uh, t using Juneteenth as a hashtag certainly didn't pick up enough steam for it to be a hashtag that people were constantly using or referencing online, right? The hashtag people, everyone referenced was BLM, BLM, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, right? And again, from what I've seen, and if I'm wrong, let me know, but from what I have seen, I did not see any, and keep in mind, I've, I've been on Twitter since November, so it's been several months now, over six months, and all that time, I've seen many political posts. I've commented on many a political post, usually commenting how politics is stupid and we're all being played. But I have yet to see any post until now talking about Juneteenth or advocating for Juneteenth. And as we all know, you know, especially but say the Gina Carano situation and whatnot, when the Twitter mob, when the Twitter mafia, you know, gets riled up, right? You notice it. You see it. You can't avoid it. It's like a wave, right? You still get hit with it even if you are not the intended target. Yet I did not see any groundswell of support for Juneteenth. I saw plenty of support again for BLM. That continues. Um, a lot of support from politicians, you know, for, for BLM, the organization and allowing people to, you know, march and protest and riot and all that in the name of BLM, but didn't hear one word about Juneteenth. Didn't see any Twitter uh, movements or social movements about Juneteenth. Support for, for BLM, a plenty. Juneteenth, I didn't see any. So we literally got a holiday. <laughs> we literally got a holiday that nobody was strongly campaigning for, or that no one in any margin, large way was asking for, from best as I can tell. Which, of course, does not surprise me, because let's be honest, Trump may have proposed this, and had he been reelected, maybe he would have passed it, maybe he wouldn't. Don't know, you'll never know, because he ultimately uh, was not reelected. Uh, let's just admit it. <coughs> <Fee three. coughs> but anyway. <coughs> oh my god. This cough keeps just attacking me. But, um, as I was saying, we have no idea whether or not um, Trump would have passed it. Right? But we know that Biden did. He just did it. Right? So it's one of those things where the previous president sort of, you know, floats the idea but the sitting president is the one who gets all the credit, right? Like I said, it's political. And to be honest, let's be honest, Biden did not, at least in my opinion, and if I'm wrong, let me know. I'm always open to being proven wrong if you can prove it. But let's be honest, it's highly unlikely that Biden passed this because he honestly believes or cares about the plight of black Americans back in the uh, Civil War days and the Reconstruction or Jim Crow and all that. It's not because he cares about the, the checkered, uneasy past that America has with slavery and with black Americans. It's not about uh, the current issues, right, in black America that Biden cares about. There's no reason to believe, from best I can see, that he did this because of any sort of care for the black community. Biden did this for Biden. Biden did it because it's politically expedient for him.
to do so. Because remember, his track record as regards African Americans, not great. There's things like that gaff, right? Uh, him, him saying that uh, uh, if 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 you're black and don't vote for him, then you ain't black, right? Which shows his sense of entitlement. He feels that he's entitled to to the black vote because he's a white liberal. <laughs> you're not entitled to anything but my disdain, Joe. And I don't lose my blackness or my black identity because I didn't vote for you. You have no say or power over me when it comes to my ethnicity. I was quite literally born this way. All I have to do is stay black and die. <laughs> but anyway, there's that. Then, of course, there is uh, probably most infamously the 95, uh, the, sorry, 94 crime bill which many people have taken issue with because of how it criminalized things like marijuana use and, you know, the huge disparate, dis, de, desperate or, or, or disparate numbers of African Americans who are in prison as compared to whites for the same or similar offenses and all this other stuff. And then let's not forget that his now VP, Kamala Harris, back when they were both candidates for the Democratic nomination for the presidency, went toe-to-toe, -to -toe and she high-key accused him of racism, and not just of racism, but being a racist, because of uh, his history of supporting anti-busing uh, uh, back in the 70s, to the point where Kamala literally used the a, uh, and that little girl was me story to more or less damn him in front of the national audience. And then she turns around and she teams up with him to become the VP. So I think that tells you where her moral compass is, that she will imply, heavily imply that he's a racist when they're competing. But when uh, he ends up winning the, the nomination, she's willing to put all that aside and stand by him as his VP. And you wonder why I don't like politicians. So again, this is purely a political move on Biden's part. I don't believe this is done out of any goodness or altruism in his heart. Though I do feel sorry for their dog, Champ. The dog, the presidential doggy, Champ, the, gold, the German Shepherd, has sadly passed away after 13 years. So my heart does actually feel for them in that regard. I know what it's like to lose a pet. But outside of that, screw you. <laughs> All right, so I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about Juneteenth. Oh, one more thing. One more thing, you see? <laughs> one more thing. There is actually one thing that irks me about Juneteenth. But it's not really about Juneteenth itself. It's purely political. But here's the thing. Think about it for a moment. Juneteenth is about commemorating an event that is, has, has long since happened, right? And I have no issue with commemorating the event. I think that it just, it happened in Texas, let it stay in Texas. But, but if they want to make it a federal holiday, fine. I, I don't take issue with it on those grounds, right? Plenty of holidays commemorate uh, uh, long dead people or long dead events, right? Uh, MLK, uh, President's Day, Lincoln's birthday, Washington's birthday, and all that stuff. That's not the issue here. Here's what kind of gets me about this. This holiday, this brand new holiday, which is purely politically motivated, like every holiday is, right? That came out of nowhere because nobody was advocating for it until now. <laughs> this holiday, is to commemorate an event from the 1800s. And now with all due respect, the America of the 1800s does not exist today. Slavery is no longer legally practiced or socially promoted. If anybody is being held enslaved in America, guess what's gonna happen? If it gets found out, the police are gonna go, the, the enslaver is gonna be arrested, and the slaves are going to be freed. We, we, we no longer politically legally or socially practice or agree with slavery. So this is about an event that no longer has any impact or say on modern day American life. Like many holidays no longer have any say 
or real setting, I guess. If that makes sense. I clearly can't think of a term. Right? But have no no real, I guess, connection to modern day American life. They are to memorialize a long past event. I'm fine with that. But think about it for a moment. We get a day off now for this holiday. For this brand new holiday, which is commemorating in 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 an event from well over a hundred years ago. Everybody involved in this whether it be the president, the army and union generals, the slaves, everyone is long dead. Their descendants are probably long dead. But we get a day off for, for this, to commemorate, you know, what, a, what black America has gone through to get to this point in American history. Yet, September 11th, Patriot Day, a tragedy, a terrorist attack that hit New York City in, in the Pentagon and other parts of the country, but in particular New York City, which changed the world, which is only 20 years old this coming September. We don't get a day off for that. We don't get a day off to mourn the dead, to mourn the fallen, to mourn the innocence that we lost on that Tuesday morning all those years ago. And it's only been 20 years. I was 16 when 9-11 happened. I'm 36 now. Many people, like myself, are still alive and remember that. Many of the people, not all, but many of the people who were literally there and survived that day are still here. 9-11 is not some long dead event that is now just a footnote in American or world history. It is still very real. It is still very raw. It's not even a quarter of a century old yet. We need, to, we need another five years for that. But guess what? We don't get a day off for that. We might be told to, you know, to have a moment of silence. Then they might do the lights here in New York City to sort of symbolically represent the, the Twin Towers that are forever lost. But no day off. No day off to remember the fallen. No day off to mourn. No day off to remember the uh, dead, whether, whether they were related to you or not. On September 11th, you still have to go on, as go on with 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 your day. You don't get a day off, right? Get your ass to work. Remember the fallen, but get your ass to work. For an event that happened only 20 years ago, but for this and for other holidays, where uh, we're remembering something that took place decades and sometimes hundreds of years ago, take the day off, you're fine. Let's remember what happened. Take the day off, do what you need to do. Come back to work the next day. I'm of the opinion that if you're gonna do the holiday thing, either make all holidays days where you get a day off, which is what I would prefer, or a day for, for remembrance, but a day where you still have to go to work, one or the other. Don't play this ticky-tack thing where some days, some holidays you get off and some holidays you don't. Because then you end up in situations like this, where no, no one gets a day off for a tragedy that, that's not even 25 years old, but we get a day off for a tragedy, or rather, not, not even, well, slavery was a tragedy, right? But this, is, but, but, but this is celebrating the abolishment of slavery, so a positive thing. Abolishment of slavery over a hundred years ago, day off. Terrorist attack on the country, in particular focused on New York City, changed the skyline forever, killed thousands of people, uh, both in the aftermath and in the years since. Get your ass to work. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's the video. Please let me know what you think, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good day and night wherever you are. Bye.